Hi, I'm Scott. I created this three-part video series to show you how I modified my RK 1UP cabinet to use the popular 16-in-1 board that contains lots of classic arcade games which run on a vertical monitor. This video is part of a series of videos I've created related to the RK 1UP cabinets. The 16-in-1 board allows you to play numerous classic arcade games using one cabinet. This saves you space and money by not having to purchase numerous game-specific arcade cabinets. Here are just a few of the classic arcade games based on the vertical monitor which are contained on the 16-in-1 board. Pac-Man, Miss Pac-Man, Galaga, Space Invaders, Frogger, Dig Dug, Donkey Kong, Burger Time, New Rally X, Scramble, Zaxxon, Galaxians, Phoenix, Mappy, 1942, 1943, Time Pilot, Centipede, Millipede, Arkanoid, Super Breakout, and speed up versions of Miss Pac Man, Miss Pac Man, and Galaga, as well as numerous other games from the early 1980s. In this three part video series, I'll show you how I converted my RK1 Up Space Invaders cabinet into a 61 vertical classic arcade games cabinet. In this video, Part 1, I'll show you the parts I purchased and where I purchased those parts from. I'll show you how to build a speaker panel subassembly. Alright, let's get started. There is a PCB made which is referred to as a 60-in-1 board. It contains classic arcade games that are based on a vertical monitor. Arcade 1UP has several cabinets with a vertical monitor such as Pac-Man, Galaga, Centipede, Space Invaders, and Burger Time. Arcade One also has several cabinets which are made with the horizontal monitor, such as Asteroids, Rampage, Street Fighter, Mortal Kombat, and Final Fight. In this video, you can see the difference between a vertical monitor in Space Invaders and a horizontal monitor in Asteroids. One goes straight up and down, the Space Invaders vertical monitor, and the other monitor goes left and right, which is the Asteroids horizontal monitor. I purchased the Space Invaders cabinet for $75 at a Black Friday event at Walmart in 2019. I also purchased a riser for $11 from the Walmart clearance. My total price for the cabinet of this project was $86. I purchased this Space Invaders cabinet specifically to convert it to a 16-in-1 board cabinet. it came in the mail today I got a package from do it yourself retro arcade so what I'm expecting here we're gonna unbox this this should be my kit to convert my astro I mean my space invaders to the 60 and one board so this is my 60 and one kit and some parts I ordered from do it yourself retro arcade so let's go ahead and do this unboxing and see what I got All right, lots of peanuts, oh boy, my favorite. So, let's just throw these on the floor. So we can get to the parts. All right, first up, 
my speaker panel, my J panel. Now, something I had to special order this with Shane is I want to match up uh, a speaker panel with my 19 and one conversion on my asteroids. And it's got the HAP style buttons uh, right here. So he put those holes there instead of having the smaller holes here. I asked him to uh, replace it. So when I put these two together, that they'll look, you know, like they're supposed to be a match set. So there's my speaker panel. Now one thing real quick to note, you'll see when I put this at an angle, you see the brown right through here. Uh, I'll tape all this off and then I'll spray paint from the back side. I'll spray paint the inside of this stuff. So it'll look just like my speaker panel over here on my 19 and one on my asteroids and I'll spray paint the, uh, the screws that hold the speakers in. So uh, I'll do that a little bit later in the video. All right, next up, <clears throat> this is the Space Invaders. I ordered the board from him. You're, you could be saying, Scott, you could save, this was 60 bucks, but his quality of work, I got the yellow uh, T-molding, his quality, and it's beveled right there. His, this is a birch board, by the way. His quality is excellent. So I could have drilled holes into the press board that came with the Arcade 1UP original, but this is gonna be so much nicer. I don't need that plastic uh, acrylic on top. Th this, this is, I got his uh, 19 and one board over here and there's no plastic or acrylic on top to protect it, the artwork. And you can see over here the sheen, there's a plastic cover. So these will be match sets, so it'll look good. You know, the speaker panels will be matched and then I'll have two control panels from uh, Shane at Do It Yourself Retro Arcade. They won't have that plastic over top of it. So it'll look really nice. Oh, by the way, this really does look good, real life. So, very impressed with that. Okay, next up, uh, power supply. All right. Oh boy, here comes a a goodie bag. Well, uh, it's sealed, so Shane sealed that, so it doesn't come loose in shipping and go all over the place, but. Uh, there's my EMI filter. I'll plug this into the wall. I'll bust this bag out a little bit later and show you all the details in it. Uh, here's my amplifier. That'll go from uh, the 16-in-1 board to the amplifier and then onto the speakers. Uh, this is my LCD conversion board. This will let the 16-in-1 board communicate through a VGA cable. Uh, to the arcade one up monitor. What's this? Okay, there's a joystick. There's my two speakers. By the way, these are four inch eight ohm speakers. What we got here and here. is the 60 in one board. Okay, good deal. Put that there. Let's see, and digging into the peanuts, I think that's about it. So that's the main unboxing. In the next section, I'll unbag this. We'll see what's inside this bag. That was my player two button. I'm not gonna get on the floor to go get it. This is the JAMA harness. So this is the solder side. And that's the part side. And uh, this is specifically made to work with the 60 in one board. So not every pin has a wire coming off of it. So Shane, Shane has these custom made to work with the, uh, this JAMA harness to work with the 60 in one board. Uh, Here's my player one button. The player two button rolled off onto the, the floor. I'm not gonna get it, but you just have to trust me on that one. My EMI filter, so I'll plug the power plug from the wall into here. I can turn this switch on. 
and then the power will come out of here and go into the power supply and then the power supply will power to the amplifier to run the speakers and it will power to the JAMA harness up to the 61 board to run the games. <clears throat> okay. So let's do the buttons. Oh, by the way, these are the uh, PCB, the feet, to go to the 16-in-1 uh, board, the standoffs. So that's what I'll use to mount it into the inside of the cabinet. So for each button I get, there's a switch. I'll have to install the switch and the buttons. And I'll go over that briefly in this video. So there's two switches here, one for player one, one for player two, and then I've got the, on the play field, there's three buttons. These are the three red ones. I'm not play field, but the control panel. And here's three, three switches that go with it. And these are my two buttons for the J panel or speaker panel, I got the same color to match them up, so my service and test buttons will be the same on both my 19 and 1 and my 16 and 1. And uh, there's two switches that go with it. And let's see what I ordered. Uh, so what? So what I ordered was two additional buttons, a white and a yellow. And the reason I did that because his pack or kit comes with three red ones and I didn't want three red ones. I've got some spare buttons too, but I'm going to color code the three buttons on the control panel different than the three red ones that come in the standard kit. So I ordered these two extra buttons. So with that, you get all of these washers. These are just a bunch of plastic washers, a screw, or I'm sorry, a plastic, these are a bunch of plastic screws, the screw your button to the underside of the control panel. Once again, I'll, I'll do a quick segment, video segment showing you how to install all those buttons. There's my player one, player two switches. Oh, I'm sorry, these are the extra switches for the extra buttons. Uh, this is a cable that will go from the EMI filter, the back of the EMI filter. This will connect into my, control, uh, my power supply. This is a splitter for 12 volts. So this, uh, this is the 12 volt. This will plug into the red will go to a positive 12 volt on my power supply and the black goes into a uh, ground. So this will be the 12 volt coming off the power supply. And I'll plug this pigtail into it like that. And this will give me two, two 12 volt leads one will go to the LCD panel and one will go to the amplifier. And that's it. That's all the parts that come in. So I already have some parts in stock. I have um, some speaker wire to run from the speakers down to the amplifier. And I've got the screws for the joystick to attach a joystick to the underside of uh, the control panel and the screws to attach the power supply and the amplifier to the inside of the cabinet. And I have the bolts that I will use to attach the speakers to the speaker panel or the J panel. And I also have the VGA cable and the power supply cable. I already have those two for my computer box. So that's everything I have. Now here are some other parts I have in my parts bin to finish off this project. Here's my VGA cable. And this will connect uh, the 60 in one board, the output, the video output to the LCD board that's this one, this conversion board that will then connect into the LCD monitor. I have a power cable. This will go from, you know, this is a standard computer power that goes from the wall. Here's the plug. And then the plug will go into uh, the EMI filter. And then you'll have the back of the cabinet will go like this. So, you, so all the electronics 
will be behind the panel so nobody will get shocked. That's a safety hazard in case somebody trips on a power cable. They'll just pull this cable out of the EMI filter plug and just come unplugged instead of pulling a live wire out of your power supply. Um, here's my uh, speaker wire. There's a four foot here, two foot per speaker. This will connect the speakers right here up to the amplifier. Um, here's some wood screws. I use number six one half inch. You can get these at Lowe's or Home Depot or any, any place. Uh, that's what I'll use to connect uh, the amplifier and the power supply. In, I'll secure that to the inside of the cabinet so they don't bounce around when it gets moved and I'll use four screws just to secure the joystick to the underside of the control panel. And then I've got these screws for the speaker to attach the speakers. 832nd, I'm sorry, number 8 with the 32 size screw thread, half inch, stainless steel. And then the nuts that go on the back of it. And uh, once again, I'll paint these with the flat black so they'll hide them. Like you can't see this, the speakers. Here's my speaker panel. You can't see those screws over here that have been painted. And uh, just so you know, and then this is just a piece of cardboard. I put holes in, I put the, the, those uh, bolts in here, and paint them, and that's just to hold them up. So, because I want to get the paint on the head as well as on the side of it and just a little bit underneath of it, just in case. So it'll be all, uh, it'll be all painted black so you won't see any kind of the stainless steel bleed through. And then the paint, I'll be using the paint, the J panel or the control, uh, you know, the, where the speakers go. That's called the J panel on the arcade one up. Is, I got this from Lowe's, it's Fusion, all-in-one uh, matte black. It's Krylon. Okay, so that should be everything I need to do to convert my uh, Arcade 1-Up Space Invaders into a 60-in-1 arcade cabinet. size uh, number eight bolts 32 second screw thread half inch uh, they're on this piece of cardboard they're ready for paint see how they're up just a little bit so I can make sure I get all the head painted and uh, I took my painters tape and I prepped my J panel or my speaker panel this is the back side so I'm gonna spray at an angle down and an angle down to get on the inside of these uh, speaker grills and then I paint it uh, then I put the tape over the front of the speaker grill so the paint won't come through and, and get on this black face so that's what this blue tape is on the front just to keep the spray paint from coming through and getting on the front edges and then uh, you know this might be overkill you could paint the whole back side if you wanted to but uh, I'm just kind of like that. Uh, that that didn't appeal to me I wanted it to be a little bit nicer and cleaner so I taped everything off and then, um, you know, here's my paint I'm going to use. Got this at Lowe's. Now, the reason I painted it all like this or taped it all off like that, because you come in and you do a fan approach. So it'll be at an angle like that and I'll come down and I'll spray. I'll start spraying before I come up to it and I'll spray like this, come over, come over, come over. And then I'll flip it over like this so I can get the other side and I'll paint down like this. and. Once again, I'm doing light coats. I'll do like two or three light coats. I'll let it dry and then another light coat or two. But don't do heavy coats because you'll get dripping. Uh, so you're better off doing, you know, start spraying before you get to it. Spray through it. Quit spraying about right here. You know, start about right here. Start, spray, stop. Start, spray, stop about right here. So that's called the fan approach. And that'll keep you from getting, you know, heavy amounts of paint on a spot and, and having drips or runs. I'm back from the paint shop and I'm done spray painting uh, the bolts I use for the speakers. 
turned out pretty good. And then uh, I'm back from spraying. You see now there's no more of the brown, whatever angle I hold it, you don't see those brown inserts, like you don't see this color brown anymore. So uh, it paints uh, drying off and then I'll remove the blue, blue uh, masking tape, painter's tape, and we'll move on to the next part of the project. All right, I got all those painter's tape removed. This is what the front looks like. Here's the different angles. Once again, this is what it used to show this brown through at these angles. Now remember, there's gonna be buttons here, so you won't see any of this brown. And there's gonna be bolts holding the speakers on through these four holes. You won't see any of that brown. So everything's gonna be black. Uh, it looks pretty good. And then here's the back where, uh, you know, you see where I had a little bleed on some of my tape, but nothing bad at all. Looks pretty good. So this one's good. This is a success. Done prepping the speaker panel, the J panel. All right, if you've done any modding enough, you'll know that every mod's got its own issue. There's always an issue you gotta deal with. In my 1901 mod of the Asteroids cabinet, my issue was the JAMA harness. If you watch that video series, you'll see how I dealt with that, but the harness I originally had, had a connector for the buttons at 0.110, and I needed the half style button connectors that were 0.187. So I had to get a new JAMA harness. The 16-1 conversion on the Space Invaders, my issue is on the J panel or the control or where the speaker panel is gonna go. So this is the speaker panel from Do It Yourself Retro Arcade. This fits my asteroids. It'll slide right in there. It's the exact same dimensions uh, as the one I have in that board right now. So do-it-yourself retro arcade, his process is correct. This is not a do-it-yourself retro arcade issue. This is an arcade one-up issue. And I believe it's all related to the Space Invaders cabinet. You know, that's a whole video I could make on the enigma and the life and history of this arcade one-up uh, Space Invaders cabinet. So this is the J panel from the Space Invaders cabinet. This is the J panel from my Asteroids cabinet. And guess what? And it's hard to see because they're both black, but well, let me flip it over. The, space, the Asteroids is white on the back side, but they're not the same size. The Space Invaders is shorter than um, the Asteroids. This is a, uh, the speaker panel from uh, Do-It-Yourself Retro Arcade is the same size as the asteroids panel. So that means it won't fit. Sorry, and that means it won't fit in my Space Invaders cabinet because it's too wide. So I need to make some cuts. So I need to make some cuts on this uh, speaker panel I got from Do It Yourself Retro Arcade. So I put some painter's tape on here. I measured the distance on this side and this side to make even cuts so this still lines up in the center of my cabinet my jigsaw will ride on this tape and cut this and hopefully that's not going to splinter the front of this and everything looks good okay i finished using the jigsaw to cut these tiny edges and they're tiny they're not very wide off each end of uh, this new speaker panel from do it yourself retro arcade once again it's not their fault this is a arcade one-up quality control issue on this gen 1 space invader so i should be able to take this and i'm trying to film this with one hand and do it with one hand uh, get this speaker panel looks like it's gonna fit and now it slides in i mean i'll pull that back out and remove the blue tape but all right so we're good to go problem solved once again, if you've had this problem with any of your conversions, just let me know in the comments down below. But I think it's related just to the Space Invaders cabinet. I finished building the speaker panel assembly. This is called the J panel. So I've got the two buttons installed. I used the white and black. Now my white I'm gonna make is my service button. My black's gonna be my test button. Uh, here you can see where the, the bolts been painted black the inserts have been painted black and that kind of 
you know, it makes it invisible like it is on that machine. That's my 19 and one cabinet, or yeah, Asteroids cabinet with a 19 and one board. And I'm gonna be putting the 60 and one board into this Space Invaders cabinet. Uh, on the back side, uh, on the, I've got a, so, so I know this is gonna be my right, my left button. So I've got these pointed down. This is gonna be my top. Here's my speakers. Now I could have taken my two foot, this is two foot of speaker wires on each side. I could have taken those and put connectors on it and put it here and can manually connected to the speakers, but these are really delicate. So I just soldered mine on there. So I put a, you know, a little bit of solder on each, well, I stripped the, the wire off to the, uh, the covering wire, the red wire here, the black wire here, just to expose the uh, wire underneath of it. And then I tinned it, put a little solder on it, and I put a little solder on this connector, and then I heated them together, and, and I just slipped it in the hole. So you solder, it's pretty straightforward to solder these on, but these are solid. Uh, once again, these are really delicate, so I'll, that's why I soldered them, because sometimes if you, if you crimp an edge onto this wire and you try to put it onto the speaker connector right here, it's so delicate that you'll break that off and you'll have to go buy another $4 speaker. And if you get it in the mail, you have to pay for shipping. So it's just something I do. All right, so the speaker panel, the J panel, this subassembly, this is ready to go into the cabinet. That wraps up this Arcade 1UP video, part one. This shows how to convert the Arcade 1UP cabinet to use a 60-in-1 Classic Arcade Vertical Games board. Be sure to watch the next video in this series where I'll show you how to build the control panel subassembly and how to install the LCD conversion board. For automatic updates of when I add content to my YouTube channel, subscribe to my YouTube channel by clicking on that red subscribe button. And don't forget to ring that bell. If you like this video, then click on the thumbs up button. If you dislike this video, then click on the thumbs down button. Please leave any positive feedback you have in the comment section below. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.